I am uh, Captain B. I own Captain B Surf Fishing Charters. Um, I have a 100 ton captain's license. I've been fishing of all sorts since I was four years old. I had a commercial fishing business when I was nine, and I would sell $200 worth of flounder for 40 bucks because I didn't know any better, but when you're nine and you go to the arcade with 40 bucks, you're a pimp, so you're perfect with that. <laughs> I specialize now in surf fishing, but I also still do offshore fishing as well. Uh, again, as, as it was stated, I, Jim said, to come in to fill in for a speaker. We've got something amazing happening now. I'm sure a lot of you have fished it, and if you have not, get out there and fish it. The mullet run is something that is very, very special, and we, to have it as solid as we have it here in Bavard County is wonderful. Keep an eye on the storms that are out there right now because they will affect where the mullet are, where they're running. Right now we've got some pretty severe rips and they're pushing the mullet out. As I mentioned in the beginning, the mullet run is something that's it's magical. I can go to the beach and just watch it happen. 100 plus pound tarpon jumping and doing acrobatic flips black tip shark, spinner shark, giant jack crevel. Obviously the snook is the main target. Wonderful. Totally different type of fishing than what we were just talking about. You want to travel light and you want to be prepared to move. I will fish with one pole, max two. I have a backpack that I'll keep one in. I will have some artificials. We'll go into that in a moment but I'll have various size hooks all the way from a one aught to a five. I like to use the smallest hook that I can get away with. Um, I feel it gives better action, etc. But depending on the size of the mullet will depend on the hook size. If you've got a bigger mullet, you need a bigger hook to get it up and through. The fish are in a trance almost in the mullet run, so they're not as concerned about leaders. I use a much heavier leader for the mullet run than I do at any other time of the year. I actually use 25 pound leader if I'm fishing non-mullet run for snook. I use 50 to 80 for the mullet run. And I do that because of number one, the size of fish, number two, the possibility of the tarpon that you're gonna get, and number three, which I'll show you with the rigs that I have up here, and how you're actually gonna catch your bait without having to carry a cast net or a bucket to put the bait in. The key is finding where the mullet are. Sometimes we have them all the way stretched down the beach. A lot of times there are pods that are moving. You want to look for the birds and which way the birds are. The birds have a great sense of where these fish are. They will go to where the fish are feeding. The birds are not eating, other than the pelicans, the birds are not eating the mullet. They're eating the byproduct of the, the fish that gets chopped up by the, the feeding fish, by the sharks, by the jacks, or anything else that chops them up for eating that. It'll create an oil slick, the birds can see it. Look for the birds, and if you see a lot of the birds going, even the pelicans, because they will dive on it, that's where you're gonna go. Be prepared to move. You park at the Radisson exit here, and you're not seeing any of the mullet, but you're seeing birds moving north, drive north. Find another stop. When you find it, fish it. You see the mullets, stay with them. Be prepared to move down the beach with them. Always bring some water with you that you can have in the backpack too, by the way, or Gatorade, or not the hard way. So when you find the fish, we're gonna take a rig. This float does not go on, it's tied on, so this does not come off. Can everybody see that? It's a knocker rig. The lead will slide, but the lead is all the way down on the hook. The larger snook, feed closer to the bottom, which is why I have a lead. This will be tied to my rod. I'll use a 6,500 to 7,000. You can get away with a six, depends on how much action you're looking for. This will be tied onto the rod. Now, this is crucial. This is your bait. It's a large treble hook, again, with another lead on it. I've got a quick release swivel. And I'll have these, I'll sit these down. Um, you can come take a look at it. With this quick release swivel, you're gonna take it, and if my eyes can see and no light, and you're gonna hook it through the eye of your single hook. Okay, you're gonna take this, you're gonna throw it into the school, 
yank, yank, yank. You're going to catch a mullet. You're going to snag a mullet. You're going to bring it in. You're going to take this off. Again, it's a quick release. Swivel, you're going to take it off, put it in your hat, put it on your backpack, hook the mullet onto the rig, pitch it out into the water. Away we go. Fish on. This prevents you from having to carry a cast net and or a bucket with you. There are other ways to do it other than the quick release swivel. I prefer this for the first name of the swivel, quick release. You can do it with a loop knot and tie it around the hook. I'm not a big fan of that. It takes longer and it also has the ability to break off much easier for that. So after you snag the mullet, you're gonna bait it, look for action. You'll be able to see it. When there's a fish, there'll be a circle, the mullet spread out around it. Cast into that. Don't be impatient. If you see bites going off in other places, let that mullet stay. That mullet, number one, is injured. Number two, it's got a weight attached to it. To the fish, it's gonna look like an easy meal. They're gonna come and eat it. What kind of fish? We don't know. We want it to be a snook, sure. Could be a tarpon, could be a spinner, could be a big jack. But that's the fun of the mullet run when you're fishing it. Now, moving into the artificial, if you are, one second, go ahead. How do you hook the mullet? The mullet, you can hook it three different ways. Do not hook it in the tail. That's for offshore fishing only. Come up through the bottom, put it in the mullet's mouth. This is my preferred way. In its mouth and then up through the mullet. Some people will close the lip. I believe that kills the mullet because it cannot breathe. It can't open its mouth. It cannot get water through the gills. You can also take it and hook it through and above the eye. If it's a very large mullet, right through the eye sockets, that's another good way to hook it. Um, and again, the third way, as I said, through both lips, I don't like it. I don't do it. My preferred way is in the mouth, up through the hard part of its head. Um, moving into the artificials, you're going to want to match the hatch. If the mullet are four inches long and you're throwing an eight inch slug, forget it. Nothing. You want your soft plastics or hard plastics to be the size of the mullet. I do not recommend bright colors like an orange or my favorite lure, a redhead with white body during the mullet run. Silver, gold, gold flake, the white with the gold flake, straight white. Particularly if the water is dirty, straight white. The paddle tails mimic the swimming motion of the mullet the best. But again, the number one thing is the size of that soft plastic. If the mullet are big and you're throwing a small one, not very likely. So carry a lot of different sizes of those soft plastics and a lot of sizes of your rig heads, of your, your the, the jig and the rig heads, so that you can match that. Um, if you're fishing the hard uh, plastics, the moonwalker in the morning, if we have calm seas, fantastic. I have not fished the new skinny lipper that uh, is out, but it looks it looks very solid to me. It looks like a very good bait, um, and I believe that would be productive there. Uh, I also think that that if you're targeting meat fish, a popping cork with your mullet is another good way to get it further out and to draw attention to it. Uh, do not buy the popping corks that have the black wire leader on them. If you do buy those, just throw them away on your way out of the store. <laughs> but just use your own popping cork. Use, again, a heavy leader and then a split shot close to the hook, about the thumb's length away from the, the actual hook itself for that. Um, how long will the mullet run last? It started, but again, as I mentioned earlier, the storms are going to affect it. We've got a lot of stuff brewing out there right now. If it stays in the Gulf, it's going to push it in. If it pulls in or has an effect from a high pressure, it's going to create some currents that could be moving it out. But you're going to, you're going to, we're going to get it this year, I would imagine, probably toward the end of October, last week of October, and I think it'll go away. 
Uh, I had no idea when it would start this year. Frankly, I didn't expect it to start this soon because of how hot it's been. Our water's still close to 90 degrees. That's really, really warm for the mullet. The mullet prefer it around 82 in that area, and they're moving into hotter water. So I'm not convinced, and this would be a good thing for us, that they're going to stall when they get down to that hotter water in South Florida and back up and create more fishing opportunities for us. Any questions? Yes, sir. Gulps, jerk shads, that type of stuff. Yeah, perfect. The, the gulps are fantastic. And again, matching the size of it and the proper color of it. The jerk shads, now I like to use those actually with a, a naked hook, no, no lead head on it. Just an actual naked hook so that they create a soft flutter coming down. You jerk it, it comes back up. It mimics an injured bow. Swivel on the top of floor cover? Yes. Yeah, and that's a good good point. With If you're fishing artificials, I generally preach very light or minimum terminal tackle. In the mullet run, fishing artificials, you're going to want to use a swivel. I'm not your uni knot or your, your surgeon's knot. You're going to want to use a swivel. Don't skimp on buying your swivel. Buy the, the higher dollar swivel. The last thing you want to do is you have a snook of a life, pop it in half. But yes, yeah, swivel definitely because the bait will spin and you don't want your line to get twisted up. So is there a swivel? Uh, is there a style of swivel or more brand that you recommend? The Mustad makes probably the best. Um, I just had one. <laughs> I just had one the other morning for straight. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, Mustad, and they're more expensive, but it's it's better, and you know you would have spent another dollar to prevent that from happening. I guarantee it. You know, and that's that's. I just, for, I just tried to straight to the. Yeah, yeah. and if I'm fishing, the swivel out of the, out of the equation. If I'm fishing the river for snook, if I'm fishing any other time of the year for snook, I'm using either a uni knot or a surgeon's knot. I do not like terminal tackle, but for the mullet run, number one, your leader is much bigger. So the swivel connection is actually a better connection than actually line to line knot. It's got less chance of breaking because it, the, the, with the, the larger leader and the braid, the braid will cut into the line when it gets pulled tight. And that'll create a weak spot in your knot. Yes, sir. Does the color of the swivel matter? Have they got black, brown plated, brass? I recommend going with black because the silver and the gold will attract the small Spanish mackerel and they'll cut your line. Anyone else? Yes, sir. So, scenario last, last week we had some ribbons, not really schools. Like classic run, the ribbon starts showing up. Yeah. They're in a trough. I got a from me to him and 100 pound target. Go through, didn't have live, go through 10 to a dozen different artificials. How do you like to throw at the school or you throwing carbon jumpsies to the swirls there? People say toss on the swirl and then your face it. Go to the edge of the school, pass over the school, come back through. What do you think? You hit it on the end. Cast past. I'm a firm believer of this. Cast past the bait, reel <coughs> into the bait. Yeah. If a cheeseburger dropped out of the sky right now, you're going to be pretty skeptical. But if the waitress walks by with a cheeseburger, oh, that looks pretty good. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> What do, you like, what do you like for your favorite artificial? I know you said matching the hat, so those sides you see paddle tails, lips. I, I like the paddle skin. tail for yeah. this. I like. Um, I also like the hog bait, if you're familiar with that. It's a yeah. long, big bait. The, 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 Looks like the eel. Yeah, that's correct. And I like those in white, and I use the uh, exposed hook with that. And in the mullet run, fishing the beach, you can use the exposed hook. You don't need to worry about it being weedless. Anyone else? Okay, well, thank you very much.